good afternoon my dear students i am going to start the class on extended surface now last class i, I solved few problems related to the uh, different boundary condition now i stopped at this point so this is the uh, problem i could not able to complete and i take up this one an electric motor drives a centrifugal pump which circulates hot metal fluid at 480 degrees celsius motor is coupled to a pump impeller by a horizontal steel shaft and its conductivity is given and its diameter is also given the ambient air temperature is also given temperature of the motor is limited to maximum value of 55 degree it means the shaft of the motor which is connected to the motor should not exceed more than 55 degree and the heat transfer coefficient between the shaft and the surrounding air is given 14.8 watt per meter square kelvin so what is the length of shaft you treat that as a fin and should be specified between the motor and pump this is the given condition you have to specify the length of the shaft connected to a pump which is handling a very high temperature li liquid metal that is 480 degrees so heat transferred from pump towards the motor as well as to the surrounding in this case length of the shaft is decided by the the heat which should transfer from pump to the motor and it is end is insulated and it should limited to only 55 degrees celsius and this is how the problem is uh, the annotation of the problem is like that and uh, now we have to take up these data and also substitute the temperature distribution equation as the case where the end of the fin is insulated end of the fin is insulated one minute i'll just i'll let this hold length a little bit so that i can whatever i write it will be look straight for that i am adjusting camera and okay right so now the temperature is from the data and book that is page number 50 you have to go there and the you select the formula t theta by theta naught t minus t r t minus t infinity divided by t theta t0 minus t infinity is equal to cos hyperbolic h m l minus x divided by cos hyperbolic ml this is the equation that you have to select it is very well given in the uh, data and book that is temperature distribution equation so directly taken from that book and then you substitute x is equal to l theta is equal to tl okay from substitution after substituting the theta is equal to tl theta is equal to theta l x is equal to l therefore this term get 1 it means l minus l is 0 1 by cos hyperbolic ml you get so from this you can calculate cos hyperbolic ml so you may ask me sir how to calculate the uh, hyperbolic function in calculator some scientific calculator also given the hyperbolic function you can check this value 30 by by 460 1 divided by cos hyperbolic ml so therefore inverse of cos hyperbolic you have to substitute and get the ml value so you know that m value already m, m value is known to you you substitute m is equal to square root of hb by ka m is equal to square root of hb by ka you want to substitute this in this equation so, this equation you have to substitute so there, uh, so therefore this is, uh, you can take that then substitute the P is perimeter, 
perimeter and that you have to convert and uh, those constants have taken into consideration. So, HP means uh, heat transfer coefficient into perimeter of the shaft and uh, instead of L I can go for cross sectional area and uh, D square I take and that is get eliminated and it should be multiplied and get the L value as uh, 3.51 meter. It means 35.1 centimeter or 350 millimeter right from shaft right from pump to the motor you can directly you can substitute the calculator and perimeter and those values this way L value is around 450 millimeter length. So this is how we have to solve but the only thing is that you have to select the appropriate equation appropriate equation as for the requirement. Uh, from the data handbook and then directly you can substitute. Only thing is most of the students commit mistake in substituting the values and selecting the appropriate equation and then doing the calculation. The most of the students are not familiar in calculating the hyperbolic functions and you have to, you have at least minimum 10 problem you have to practice yourself. I am repeating you have to practice, practice, practice then only you able to get the correct answer. Solve problem only you try. Don't try to unsolve problem you have to don't try in the beginning. First you have to solve the solved problem how to do it, how to do the calculation. It means you will get the perfection in calculation. Otherwise you may end up with the wrong answers and you will not get good marks for that also. So I will go to the next problem. See the one end of the long rod, another problem I have taken, one end of, uh, these are all exam problems, so I have not given the examination date and uh, the year in which the, it has appeared, but anyhow you know, it is a VTU exam problem only, question paper problem. One end of the long rod of 1 centimeter diameter is maintained at a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius. I will read through. By placing it in the furnace, the rod is exposed to an air of 30 degree at 30 degrees Celsius with a heat transfer coefficient of 35 watts per meter square Kelvin. The temperature measured at a distance of 78.6 millimeter was 147 degrees Celsius. Determine the thermal conductivity of the material. This is what the, but see by giving all this parameter he is asking you to determine the thermal conductivity of the material. So what is the temperature? The temperature is 147 degrees Celsius. It means the end of 1 centimeter maintained at 500 degree. Yes, T0 is at, uh, at base temperature is 500. He exposed to 30 degree. It means ambient temperature is 30 degree, heat transfer coefficient is given, temperature is measured at a distance of 78 which it means uh, the problem uh, the geometry of the problem is like this. So this is what the pin has given, its diameter is given and he is measuring at this point the temperature is measuring. So he is the T base temperature. And this is at a distance, he has given the distance. How much is the distance? 78.6 millimeter from the furnace. This is uh, 500 degrees Celsius. And uh, this is how it is going to be solved. Now. now the heat transfer coefficient is also given. The H value is, is around 35 watts per meter square degree Celsius. Kelvin. So, he is asking you to calculate the thermal conductivity of this material K value, this question mark. So, by again, you know the, it is a long rod, L is equal to sufficiently long. How do I select efficiently, the, the long rod means, there is a four cases, one is sufficiently long, L is infinity, another one is end is insulated, another one is heat trans, convective heat transfer coefficient at the end. There are four cases I explained. Now it is a having a sufficiently long length. Therefore, I can select the equation case 1. Case 1 I have to take. So, therefore, theta by theta naught is equal to e to the power of minus mx. That is the first equation given in page number uh, 50 of Kodan Raman data and book. You can directly take this equation and then uh, start doing the substitution. So, T base, middle temperature, where the temperature distribution is 147 minus 30, 
a base temperature is 500 minus 30 is equal to e to the power of m into h m into x value x value should be expressed in meter this is a 78.78.6 millimeter is given first you have to divide it by 10 what do you get 7.8 7.86 centimeter again divided by 100 you get 0 0.0786 meter 0 0.0786 meter so 0 0.0786 uh, meter i substituted and uh, you can calculate the m value from this so after getting the m value from this what you are going to calculate you are going to calculate the m value from this you know that theta by theta naught theta by theta naught is equal to e to the power of minus m x see so that you have to calculate m value so all the values are given you have to calculate the m value m value is 17.69 you got it is a dimensionless uh, quantity and p is equal to pi d p is equal to pi into d that is perimeter of the fin that you are going to consider perimeter of the fin you are going to consider so pi d you have to calculate pi d is equal to 0 0.03 pi d is equal to 0 0.03 this is in meter and also the area a is equal to 5 d square by 4 that you have to calculate so pi is into diameter is 0 0.01 square divided by 4 and this value gives around 2.85 to 10 raise to 10 raise to minus 5 meter square this is the value you get so after getting these two you can substitute in m square is equal to m square is equal to hp by ka m value is known h value is known area perimeter is known you can calculate conductivity k from this so that is how you have to calculate you know conductivity of k after substituting all the values you will get k is equal to 44.75 watts per meter kelvin Mass questions are whether it is expressed in Kelvin or degree Celsius. Whatever the value is giving, same value you are going to get it because the homogeneity of the equation is maintained constant. So that way you have to uh, do the calculations. Okay. Go to the next problem that I am going to. The cylinder 1 meter long and uh, 5 centimeter in diameter, cylindrical object you can say, cylindrical bar is uh, 1 meter in long and 5 centimeter in diameter is placed in an atmosphere at 45 degree and to provide uh, provided with a 10 longitudinal stride fins of material. K is equal to 120 watts per meter square meter degree Celsius. So the when the material is expressed, its property of conductivity should be also given. Then only it is possible because M is having H P by K A, H P by K A perimeter and area and conductivity and heat transfer coefficient is constituted by this M value. Okay, and uh, M should always be H P by K A, but ratio of convection heat transfer to the conduction heat transfer like that. Okay. So the you can also check the unit consistency for that last class I told you how to this is watt per meter square Kelvin this is in meter and divided by conductivity watt per meter Kelvin and this is in meter square. So you know that meter meter get cancelled 
here also meter meter get cancelled you need VAT it should be square root no if we take out it will be square root so then you will get uh, VAT meter Kelvin here also meter will okay VAT per Kelvin VAT per Kelvin get cancelled you will get meter by meter square I am going to take up in the next class. So, you check what unit value of m you are going to get. Last uh, for previous problem I have given that to unit of m value. Let me come back. And I have not mentioned the uh, m value. The unit for m I have to mention it here. I will take up this in while solving the another problem I will solve that. Okay, now first you have to write down the data which is given. Conductivity of material is given, watt per 120 watt per meter Kelvin, and temperature thickness is it uh, given in uh, thickness is in meter. Oh, so height is 0 0.7576 millimeter thick it is given. Okay, that you have to take, and uh, length also given that you have to take length is equal to 1.27 centimeter that should be converted into meter okay and uh, h value is given base temperature is given ambient temperature is given number of ins is equal to 10 is given these are the data given there in the problem and is asking you to temp calculate the uh, rate of heat transfer q value so to find the pin efficiency To find uh, the efficiency of the pin, I think it is a very lengthy problem. I'll skip it because uh, it is given there. You can calculate; it become very long, and uh, for the eight marks, it cannot be asked. That is why I am not able to uh, take much interest in solving this problem. Anyway, it is one of the exam problem. By then, uh, it is a very lengthy problem. Anyway, I am going to give that uh, hints how to solve this problem. So first you have to calculate the uh, length, total length, uh, okay, then the, these are the areas that you have to calculate and it is not possible, it is now out of syllabus, you do not uh, get into this because forget about this problem, we will go to the next problem, again it is explained, it will take a lot of time, okay, go to the uh, another problem, an aluminum square fin of 0.5 into 0.5 and 10 mm long is provided with a surface a semiconductor electronic device. It is provided on a semiconductor electronic device to carry 1 watt of energy generated. The temperature of the surface of the device is not to exceed 80 degree. It means the when the semiconductor is uh, IC chip is given, it should not exceed more than 80 degree on the surface of the uh, chip. And uh, temperature at the surface when the 80 degree when the surrounding temperature is 40 degree that is aluminum material and it is having a property conductivity is 200 watt per meter degree celsius and h value is given 15 watts per meter square and determine the number of fins required to carry out the above duty it means above the heat generated so neglecting the heat loss from the ends of the fin it means only length wise is taking end of the pin is not taking only surface wise how much is the heat is dissipated when the pins of 10 are mounted on a integrated circuit. The total heat transferred is uh, 1 watt. So perimeter you have to calculate because he has given 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is a cross section into 10. It means uh, how many are there. So perimeter means uh, 2 times the 0 0.5 into 0 0.5. It means almost it is 4 W. You will get uh, 4 into 0 0.5. How we are going to take the perimeter? If this is a uh, square 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and this is also 0 0.5 and this is also 0 0.5. All the 4 you have to add, 4, if they, you take this as a width, 4 W you get. How many are there? 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 W you have to take. Okay, that is how he has taken. So, after taking this uh, perimeter, 
calculate the area that is 0.5 into 0.5 cross sectional area into 10 raised to 6 it is in millimeter converted into meter and p by a value to calculate you will get 8 meter to the power of minus 1. So then m value to calculate 8 meter to the see m value uh, calculated the unit here. So m value is, should be hp by k a this should be minus m minus 1 per meter you get m value per meter and unit for m is minus 1 m minus 1 m to the power of minus 1 it means 24.5 by per meter it should be m value should be 24.5 per meter like that. So, ml is again as no unit m multiplied by l ml is this is also l is also meter m is also in meter this is 24.5 multiplied by the length is how much length is 24.5 and the l is 10 into 10 raised to minus b. So, this value you are going to get 0.245. This is dimensionless. ML is a dimensionless. M is what is the unit for M? Unit for M is L minus 1 I can write. And dimensionless is L minus 1 is L is in meter. L is in meter. And dimension value you can get L minus 1. So, therefore, heat transfer per fin heat transfer per pin that is again you have to select it is a short fin the first equation that you have to take that is T minus T infinity yeah it is given in the data and book that you have to take this equation and then substitute the uh, case 4 the limited length uh, fin you are going to take and this uh, def from the definition of uh, heat transfer from Fourier's law of thermal conduction heat uh, rate of heat flow per fin is uh, square root of HP K A and uh, theta B at the base temperature at the base into the tan H time tan hyperbolic M at this equation. So, that I substituted 15 this heat transfer coefficient into perimeter multiplied by conductivity multiplied by area and the temperature difference multiplied by tan tan hyperbolic m value is 0.245 l value m l that is why here I calculated m l value that directly you can take this into this equation and q fin is 0 0.012 watt per minute okay you are going to get it in so the how many number of uh, pins required the total is 1 watt divided by individual you will get 83.33 number of pins are required of the diameter so it means how many pins of this kind do you require and the pin I come back to that problem yes this is a problem I am going to see is asking you to determine the number of fins required to carry out the above duty it means uh, to 1 watt to dissipate how many fins are required of this dimension 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 and 10 mm long fin there are how many you require you require around 80 I am sorry you require around 84 number fins it means 83.33 is there you cannot go for half you can round it, round it up to 84 number of pins. I think it is very easy. You can uh, calculate this is one of the exam problem again. So, another is an electric motor it drives a centrifugal pump which circulates a hot already. I think I solved this problem. Another another problem is yes. given same problem and uh, it is once again it is repeated and this is another configuration I made and this is also a repetition. 
So go to the next uh, a steel tube carries uh, steam at a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. It means if there is a small tube, it carries a 300 uh, degree Celsius. The steam is carried into that. And the thermometer part of uh, all that configuration I am going to explain here by sh showing the figure. Steam is flowing in that and there is a thermometer part in that thermometer is kept. Its diameter and its height is given x0 to l and uh, the pipe diameter is given the temperature of the uh, ambient temperature and the steam temperature is given and T base temperature is also given and all that uh, he has noted on here and all that is given here conductivity of the material diameter of the uh, pot is 16 millimeter and thickness is 1 millimeter is used to measure the temperature the error tolerance is 2 percent maximum calculate the length of the pocket required to measure the temperature within the error how would how should be the thermometer is located take the tube wall temperature as 130 degree celsius diameter is equal to 90 millimeter assuming the convective heat transfer coefficient is 95 and these are the data I have to write down first by writing this figure okay this figure is explained and how the thermometer well is our pot is created and thermometer is kept there to measure the temperature of the fluid or the steam is going inside the tube so inside this tube yes i am going to select the indicator okay this is the uh, tube and how the steam is going to be measured by the thermometer kept on the wall so this is how we are going to take and then what are the properties given you are noted, noted down here conductivity inside diameter and the time is one minute and the base temperature is 130 degree celsius and uh, the steam temperature is 300 degree and the h is equal to this and the error of tolerance is two percent of the amb ambient temperature so tl is equal to 0.98 and T infinity is 298 degrees Celsius has gone because in there are assuming that loss of uh, heat from the tip of the pocket is negligible and the temperature distribution becomes this the previously I used uh, here cos hyperbolic L minus uh, X that I used if you L is equal to same value you substitute you will get the 1 by cos hyperbolic ML and then substitute the temperature first you have to take the length temperature whatever the measurement you are making and the ambient temperature base temperature and this is the ambient temperature you will get the ml value directly after calculating the ml value you can calculate the perimeter and cross sectional area for the thermometer part which is going to be a circular in nature and we calculate the m value so the m is 4.86 to the power of minus meter to the power of minus 1 and length is 92 millimeter ml is 4.4 substitute in the in this value calculate the length length is 95 millimeter as the length of the pocket is more than the diameter of the pipe it is also to be located in the inclined oriented it means you have to inclinedly put this you cannot put straight because it is the diameter is uh, more as the length of the pocket is more than the diameter the pipe it is to be located in an inclined uh, orientation this is one of the so thereby I stop uh, giving this I will go to the next topic of interest discussion I will just I'll close this I will upload There are many problems uh, given like this uh, in the books you can calculate depend on the situation what you have to do is uh, it is because of the time time constraint and uh, we are given only uh, specific timings to complete the uh, task is given to complete within that duration so one should not feel bad that we are going very fast it means i am giving the uh, possible uh, solution for you to understand and then refer data and book maximum and uh, try to analyze the problem 
and select the appropriate equation to solve the problem. First thing is that you have to note down how many parameters, known parameters are given and how many are unknown parameters given, which equation you have to select and how to substitute and how to calculate it. First you have to select the solved problem in the book, any textbook you take, Nepati Vajasik is there, Alban is there, Fankit is there, even uh, Indian authors, Dompanur is the best book, you can refer many problems have been solved and uh, many local authors also, live. it means our own uh, engineering paternities, to, um, professors have written so many uh, books. What you have to study is uh, to better understand, you have to study the foreign authors because they are all uh, the content selected from the research papers. Okay, that is why I am telling you, you have to refer uh, foreign authors because the content in that book is uh, research articles. Whereas uh, we are all uh, writing books by uh, selecting some information from the advanced books and then we are producing as per the syllabus. I am not telling that is a, a wrong way to refer it, but you refer it. For more knowledge, you have to go to the good uh, test books which are prescribed in your syllabus and book reference books also given. You can refer those books and uh, pertaining to your syllabus, you go to that chapter and then select the problems, solve problems. First, you solve the solved problem and then attend for the examination problem which are unsolved. If you don't get the solution, you can approach your uh, professor in your department for getting the answer for that. Okay. So the one of the topic which I left in the uh, beginning one, only you have to solve this critical thickness of insulation without heat generation. So it means uh, what is critical thickness? You know, best example is I am going to quote critical thickness of insulation without heat generation. You have seen already the electric wires which are coated, your copper wire is coated with the insulating material. That is, uh, it may be a plastic or it may be a nylon or it may be a uh, some thermo uh, setting material. Usually, we are going to use for plastic. Some of the wires are embedded with a rubber and some of the wires are embedded with their copper wires are embedded with the or coated with the rubber. So these are all the insulation that you are going to provide. That is a totally a different insulation than what we are discussing now. Critical thickness of insulation is a different thing from electric wire what you are thinking about. That is a shock proof. Sometimes it also get heated up and it unable to dissipate the heat and the wire get burnt and all the insulation on the surface is going to be destroyed and wire become bare so that anybody touches the wire, you will get electric shock or heat shock, whatever you call it as, okay. The commonly they carry uh, you know the when the electric wire is getting covered with the insulation, what happens when the heating element is there, it prevents the heat to flow outside, isn't it? This is a uh, contrary to common belief the addition of insulating material on the surface always brings about the decrease in the heat transfer rate. There are ink, there are instances when the additional of small amount of insulation to the small diameter wire or two frequently increase the rate of heat flow through the uh, tube to the ambient air. It means the best example that I am going to quote for this is the electric winding, electric motor winding you have seen that it is the electric motor winding. It looks like a copper wire, but it is having a coating. What is that coating? Sometimes they coat with the Teflon, Teflon material and it is coated with that. In order to not to, two wires when they come in contact, they will short circuit. For that to avoid, so thin uh, uh, shellac we call it as, that is going to be coated on that. And uh, that is a thin material and which prevents shocking uh, short circuiting the two copper wires when they are in contact. So the bunch of copper wires are prepared for winding, whether it is a stator or a rotor. In DC motor, the usually magnets are used in the stator and rotor is having a copper coil with the armature and then copper brush. Your mixi motor is example for that and also the submersible pumps are a coat, a copper wire coated with the uh, insulating material. Okay. These wires are used in order to dissipate maximum amount of heat when the work is delivered from the pump or when it is rotating with a high, very high speed, it converts the electric energy into mechanical energy by rotation and doing so, 
this energy also converted into heat energy. How its heat energy can be dissipated? <coughs> By providing a small motor at the base, it is going to be get dissipated. You have, must have seen that electric motor is having a number of fins on the uh, stator, stator body. Okay? Rotary is uh, again a uh, armature and the stator body in the motor, like the, the induction motor, so you got a copper coil wounded on that. So that copper coil, it cuts the flux when they are rotating. It is the frequency of the current and um, the, the rotation of the motor is more than the frequency. That is how the, I think probably you can go and consult the electrical engineers and uh, air professor, they are going to tell you about how the induction motors have been created, how they are running. So it is only when it is trying to catch the same frequency and keep on rotating. It means induced electromagnetic force on the two coils, they are opposing each other, that is why it start rotating. See, it is shown that the experiment that amount of heat loss, the rate of heat loss which increases by addition of insulation. This is our must assumption that you are going to. So, the next is that how the critical thickness of insulation is going to be considered. Let us consider layer of insulation which might be installed around the circular pipe shown in figure. The inner temperature of the insulation is fixed and the outer is exposed to the convective heat transfer coefficient at temperature and what is the thermal network for that. I am going to write the figure for this. So, you know that this is the copper tube, this inside is the copper tube and the colored one is the thickness and it is having conductivity K and it is exposed to atmosphere at T infinity and convective heat transfer coefficient. The conductivity of the material is also given, the, it is a known material. So, electrical resistance is for this, right from this point to this, this is the resistance and outside the convective heat transfer coefficient is the, because it is having two diameters, one is R0 and Ri. R0 is outside, Ri is inside and temperature is Ti and is T0, inside temperature and outside temperature are going to consider. For that, uh, d cube by dr0 is equal to 0, you have to substitute the, the This is the condition, you have to substitute the heat conduction, I come back to this previously. Okay, Q is equal to, this is the temperature distribution and also the heat flow equation. It means there is a, you do not have to go for every problem, you are, first you are going to determine the temperature distribution, after that you are going to take Fourier's law of thermal conduction to calculate the heat flow. Now, in this case, I am not going to take that heat flow, just I am going to take the total how much the heat is flowing when you consider two boundaries, one is the temperature boundary, another is convective boundary. So, for that, this is the temperature and this is the resistance, okay. It is directly taken from data handbook, okay. From this data handbook, Case number, I think, 48, this equation is given. Directly you can take it. And then, that is uh, equated to 0. And then, you have to differentiate the above equation and equate it to 0. You will get the, the result R0 is equal to K by H. R0 is equal to K by H. You have to integrate the above, sorry, differentiate the above equation to maximize the what is the value for that. So, after differentiation you will get uh, the thickness of the insulation R0 is outside Ri, difference of R0 and Ri is the thickness. Thickness of insulation is thickness of insulation is This is equal to R0 minus of Ri. So, this is the thickness of insulation. And R0 value, any of is given, that is K by H. This is what you are going to get. So, this is what you have to derive. And you will get uh, nearly 6 marks, only differentiation are putting it. There is two more steps are there. I have not simplified and then I have taken. You can also do it. The equation, above equation expresses critical radius of insulation concept. 
So if the outer radius is less than the value given in the equation, then the heat transfer will increase by adding more insulation. Okay. So why the insulation is required is to increase the heat transfer rate. That is why all electric motor windings are equipped with the uh, Teflon or nylon or maybe uh, maybe these two materials are insulating but it they enhances the heat transfer rate from the copper coil when it is under winding condition. And uh, the best is, uh, you, I do not know what is that uh, technical name, they, you, you used to call it as a cellac that we are going to coat it, it is a transparent material. So, okay, that is going to be coated on that. See the how the critical thickness of insulation varies as the outside diameter increases, when the heat flow how it increases. So, the heat of rate of heat flow, rate of heat flow increases to a certain radius after that whatever the addition of insulation you carry out it is going to be get decreased finally it becomes zero. It means more thickness if you add, if you increase R value, R naught value more compared to Ri, it is not going to yield any result. For that uh, this graph indicates that maximum radius up to this you can go. It means within this range only the temperature increases. After this temperature start, sorry heat energy, it means heat transfer going to start decrease, decreases. So, here it is keep increasing as the critical thickness of insulation keep increasing. So, up to this mark it is increased, after that it is keep decreasing. It means any addition of critical thickness or the thickness of insulation on a cylindrical material or cylindrical object, it is of no use. That is the, uh, the message that is this graph going to give you. Rate of heat flow versus thickness of insulation on a cylindrical object. Okay, this is the graph. If Ri is uh, sufficiently small, then we say that increase in the uh, heat rate and also if the thickness increases up to a certain value or not, then the it diminishes further thickness of insulation is getting added as illustrated uh, as shown in the figure. With this phenomenon, you can understand what you need to have in the appropriate critical thickness insulation on a uh, cylindrical object or cylindrical wires so that you can enhance the heat rate and also you can enhance the performance of the component that you are manufacturing or the device which you are manufacturing. Similarly, you can go for spherical objects, sphere, the critical thickness and directly you can select the, so this is the sphere, critical thickness of insulation, first you select the rate of heat flow, rate of heat flow for the spherical object it is having R i and R naught and conductivity k and having a heat transfer coefficient outside the cylinder. Okay. From this you can differentiate with respect to R, differentiate the above equation with respect to R and substitute is equated to 0 and uh, finally you will get R naught is equal to 2 k by H. So, this is for cylinder and this is for spherical object. There are two equations. This if we derive, it is more than enough. Any problem is given because I have not solved any problem in this because it is having only two equations. One is R naught for cylindrical is K by H and R naught is 2 K by H. What is the unit for this? This is band for meter Kelvin. Here it is band for meter square Kelvin. Band for meter, band for meter. Get. You will get uh, Kelvin, Kelvin get cancelled. You will get meter. It means R naught is in meter, this is also in meter. This value is also in meter. Now, the critical thickness of radius is expressed in meter only. Okay. So, the coming to the, the next part of the uh, subject of interest is transient conduction and use of temperature charts. See the transient conduction means one dimensional steady state heat conduction system. We are not uh, unsteady state condition. There are two dimensional unsteady state, three dimensional unsteady state conditions and they are become very complex in nature. You have to go for differential equation and it is very difficult to uh, analyze those because of the uh, time limitation and the number of period uh, 
fixed only we have one dimensional unsteady state heat conduction uh, problems to be analyzed so far whatever your discussion it took place in conduction it is only a steady state conduction i have taken with respect to position change of heat with respect to position you talked about you are not talked about with respect to the time and then position how the heat is getting changed or transferred the example that i am going to give you if you have experienced that in smith mechanical students already experienced the metal rod is getting heated up converted into suitable shape given as per the uh, laboratory procedures okay hexagonal bolt you created uh, and also you heated the metal rod and you are deforming it to into a suitable size or geometry given okay so after that what you are uh, experiencing you suddenly you are taking that and then dipping in a water to carry out in a read this object to your home or as a for a submission you are carrying it to the department so what do you do immediately you quench it in the water and the heat is what uh, the amount of heat which is accumulated it is getting transferred to the water where the water is having very high rate of convection convective heat transfer coefficient so in that case how long the metal is dipped in the water to reach the ambient temperature that is the condition that you are going to study here time required to cool that hot metal to convert it into a normal temperature hot metal body temperature convert it into a normal temperature this is what the physical situation explained and there are some assumptions you have to make for analyzing this problem the if the surface temperature of the body is suddenly altered any any object you take suddenly alter temperature within the body begin to change over time is it not so you must have experience whenever you, the ice is put on your body without your knowledge you suddenly experience sudden change in the surface temperature of your body suddenly you start what you are doing you are going to shout at somebody who has thrown ice on your body because it leads to a very uncomfortable situation for a person who receives a ice cube or ice uh, burf or what you call it as uh, snow on your body it means it is at 0 degree and you are at uh, 32 degree temperature gradient is very high and suddenly you experience a thermal shock that you cannot able to experience you start scolding or shout shouting at a person who has thrown it so this is called surface temperature alteration and uh, how the this temperature is going to be get compensated suddenly body will react to increase its temperature thereby you will get a some different experience okay it will take some time before the steady temperature reach okay this is called the temperature distribution when it is steady temperature distribution is still such time you you will not be able to stabilize yourself okay this is one condition determination of temperature distribution within the solid during temperature during the temperature transient i'll read the third point the determination of temperature distribution within the solid during temperature transient is more complicated matter because the temperature varies with both position and time see this you have to underline so this is very important temperature is getting altered no doubt this is very important i am not able to write the correct line okay so the both position and time it's going to be get altered in very practical application the variation of temperature with position is negligible during the transient hence the temperature is considered to be vary with time only what is a transient you are talking about transition means from a slow to okay the time is up now and uh, i'll continue this in the next class but uh, this is one of the most easiest chapter among the conduction problem because you need to refer everything from the data and book i'm using uh, uh, nagel charts and uh, heisler charts and uh, the temperature distribution charts and also heat distribution charts 
I am going to solve those exam problems which are given and everything taken from the data handbook. Okay. The, my presentation, most of the presentation is from data handbook only. With this, I will wind up this class today. I will continue in the next class the, the unsteady state uh, heat conduction problem using temperature, transient temperature charge. Okay. Thank you very much.